So good evening, late night broadcast from the Starfire Alchemist, also known as Metaphysical Life Mastery. It's Meta, bitch! What's up with y'all? I hope y'all having a good weekend for those that celebrate Labor Day. And not really celebrate it, but enjoy Labor Day. Hope you're doing well. Wasn't really planning on coming on here this late. But um, there were some things that I discovered while I was doing some reading, some weekend reading, that I wanted to share with you all before I forget various little details i didn't feel like taking copious amounts of notes you know um i'm one of those you know bookwormy people that take all kind of notes and have all kind of binders and notebooks around and composition notebooks and stuff and as i said before i got thousands of pages of books stacked up in here that i gotta read through and so i was reading this book called uther pendragon by rob stewart and that was the book that i was saying the other day um, that I was thinking in the on the the uh, lecture that I did on the operation of demons, I thank the author Rob Stewart for uh, writing for penning the book because I can tell that it was very very recently penned or it was penned in anticipation of me finding out who I am from a past life. That being King Uther Pendragon, the father of King Arthur. Yes, that King Arthur of King Arthur's uh, round table, you know, King Arthur in, in, in the Knights, um, that King Arthur of, Cam, you know, Camelot, Sir Gawain, you know, the Green Knight, all that, yeah, that King Arthur. Okay, so that is Kenyatta. Kenyatta is King Arthur. As I've said before, and I'm Uther, reincarnated. I found a little bit more about my lineage um, by reading this book, so I, I want to give a major thank you to the author rob stewart i don't know if he will hear this is possible um they told me earlier that he did hear me thank him i don't know whether that was astrally or or audibly as you're listening to this but that he did hear me thank him because this book has copyright 2021 on it and for it to come out this year and i just found out a couple of months ago that i'm uther pendragon reincarnated for it to be copyright 2021 there's no way that's a coincidence, okay? So I'm reading through, I'm on, I'm on chapter 9. And some of the chapters are really short. But it tied together some key aspects of life for me. And it helped me understand some of the things that I have discussed at length on my channels. So, come to find out, those of you who have listened for a while heard me say that I'm connected to the Romans, the Italians, that the Pope and them know me. Uh, you know, I've always been connected to that culture. Now, some people might say, well, a lot of people like Italian food. A lot of people love that culture, the Roman culture. You know, it's a, there's a holdovers from the Roman culture, the Roman Empire in America. It's not as simple as that for me, okay? Um... I've always been drawn to that culture and that language, Latin, Italian, the food, all right, the land has always called me, I remember as early as 6th or 7th grade, putting Italy on top of my list to visit. I didn't know why I had a strong draw then, because back then I didn't believe or know anything about past lives and reincarnation, and even into my 20s, due to my Christian upbringing, I was not a believer like that in reincarnation but I did entertain it I was I guess you would consider like an, I had an agnostic energy when it comes to reincarnation like yes it's possible I've always believed I've always been the type of person to believe anything's possible so even though in Christianity they taught me that reincarnation is wrong and that's some old Hinduism and, uh, and Buddhism and you know how Christians can be you know how they can be I, you know I've rebuked them um, enough times for their foolishness, all right? And um, the Pope knows this stuff, and the with the papacy, collectively the Vatican, see, they know this shit is real, all right? And um, I told you all that I had a draw to the culture, that I do speak that language, all right? Um, I have an Italian language book here. I've never been to Italy, but Rome was always top on my list, and I'm like, why do I have such a strong calling to Rome? I mean, this has been for years, y'all. This has been damn near 25 years I've been called to go there. And even my ex-husband could attest, not that I would ask him to, but even he would attest that that was top of my list. And, 
you know, he, he was a little bit cynical about Rome because he was talking about how Italy is a slower pace and how they don't do things on time. Like, you know, the Finns and the Norwegians and the Swedes do things. They're, 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 they're to the T. So if they tell you meeting at 1015, it's customary and good manners in Finland to be there at 10, 10 o'clock, 10, 10. Okay. At the latest, if you're, if you're on time, you're actually considered late in their culture. Even, I mean, that's just how it runs. And I like that. So him coming from that culture, he's like, Hey, you know, Italians do shit on their own time. I don't know about Rome. Yeah, we can go there, but he, he had his own, uh, trepidation about it, hesitations, reservations about it. So I've come to find out that me being Uther Pendragon, I've told you just a t a little bit, like a small portion that I was able to research. I haven't done extensive research. I'll admit that. Um, I haven't done extensive online research into Uther, my past life online, but I have bought a bunch of books that I'm now working my way through. And so I know the surface story, but I have not read, or I haven't gotten deep into Arthurian legend to see all of the little nuggets and who's who. Those of you who have listened for a while have heard me say that Morgana Le Fay was trained by Merlin, the magician, and that Merlin was the right hand man, the ace boon coon of Utha that was shown in Netflix's uh, Cursed. All right. If you watch Cursed on Netflix, you will see me, Uther Pendragon. You will see Merlin. You will see Morgana Le Fay. You will see Sir Gawain, who is a knight. You will see um, Lady of the Lake, my soul sister Vivian, okay? Um, also known as Nimue, also known as Vivian. In the past life, she was known as Vivian, too. And she goes by Vivian in this life, too. So... My father... According to this book, now this book is labeled historical fiction, but it tells a lot of truth. See, they, they, a lot of times they will label it historical fiction, but that's, they, they'll do that for two reasons. The first reason they will label a book that is factual historical fiction is because some names, locations, and embellishments have been changed or embellishments have been added. OK, and also the second reason will be because they will add portions, like I said, embellishments, but also because there may not be historical documentation to back it up. So then they have to call it fiction. So, for example, if if in the book it says Uther had a battle at Point Pleasant with, um, a, you know, a, a, a rogue knight and there's no historical document surviving to prove that Uther had a battle and would and won that battle at Point Pleasant against the rogue knight, they will have to call it fiction because there's no historical documentation to back it up. Okay? So in this book, I'm only in the beginning, and as I work through the book carefully, I will bring you more details. But in this book, my father was of the Roman Empire. You may remember me talking about how in Cursed on Netflix, they showed how uh, Merlin was killing, okay, and, and actually involved in the Crusades. And he, there was like an innuendo in Cursed on Netflix of him being tied to the Roman Empire. Merlin used to work for a Roman emperor, uh, or, or like a household that was connected to a Roman emperor, okay? Uther is descended from the Roman Empire. All right. So a long line of Roman kings and or peoples known as the Belge or the Belge. B-E-L-G-A-E. -E, okay. My name was not always Uther. Uther is a British name. Okay. For the Bretons. My name before it was Uther because according to this book, I took the name Uther at around 15 years old before a prominent battle with a piece of shit named Vortigern. Now, I have heard of Vortigern in real history. I have heard of that motherfucker in real history, okay? And I've also heard of him through Arthurian legend, bits and pieces of Arthurian legend. Arthurian legend is like 
700 pages. All right. So I haven't gotten through it in modern time, but I will get through it. So when Uther was uh, 15 or so, 16, he and his father had a battle with this person named uh, Vortigern, and, which is spelled V-O-R-T-I-G-E-R-N. And Vortigern was thinking he was going to set up his own motherfucking camp. And Uther, my father, was named Aulus, A-U-L-U-S, Tiberius. Listen to that name, Tiberius, T-I-B-E-R-I-U-S, Claudius, C-L-A-U-D-I-U-S. Tiberius was an emperor, was a Roman emperor, and so was Emperor Claudius. My father's from the Roman Empire. I had the name of Marcus before I was named Uther. And at the age of 15 or 16, according to this book, I took on the name Uther, that I preferred to be called Uther, which is British, Ucher, okay? And so that is why my son was is named Archer or Arthur. Archer is how it was pronounced back then, okay? The Belge or Belge, Belgi, Belge, Belge, is, depends on how people want to pronounce it, was a large confederation or conglomeration of different tribes that were living in northern Gaul, G-A-U-L. Now, most of you that know history know who the Gauls were, okay? They uh, were the uh, early um, Germanic tribes that settled in the Roman Empire, and then they gave rise, the Gauls gave rise to the modern French nation, okay? But that French nation, that modern French nation, also has a conglomeration of Greek, Italian, uh, Danish or Ger German, uh, Germanic tribes, Scandinavian tribes, as well as Spanish. Okay, so the Belgi or Belgi were a large confederation of tribes living in northern Gaul between the English Channel and the west bank of the Rhine River and the northern bank of the River Seine. Now, the River Seine, S E I N E, of course, people who know France know what the River Seine is. If you know England, you know what the Rhine is. Okay. They were here, the Belgi were there from at least the third century BC. They were discussed in, Jeff, in death by who? Motherfucking Julius Caesar, baby. Julius Caesar discussed the Belgi in his accounts of the wars in Gaul. There's your Roman Empire. So, my father was from the Roman Empire. That makes me Roman. My mother was known as Rowena, W. it was R-O-W-E-N-N-A. Some of them spell it R-O-W-E-E-N-A, Rowena or Rowena was the mother of Amarcus, a.k.a. Utha, and the wife of Aulus Tiberius Claudius. At the time that this account was given in the book, around the age of 15 years old, it was 400 and, what, 405 B.C.? 406 and 407 winter AD 406 407 winter AD and the battle with Vortigern which really wasn't a battle it was uh in Britain 415 CE okay so just a couple years difference at the time the Roman Empire was even like a short time before 405 or so they were trying to beat back the Germans from from the Germanic tribes not just the Germans, but the Germanic tribes from coming into the empire. So you'll see there's historical videos, um, documentations, um, documentaries, etc. called the Belgi or the Belgi tribes versus Julius Caesar. Okay, or the Belgi tribes versus Emperor Tiberius. Okay, the Gaelic Wars, Gallic or Gallic Wars, G-A-L-L-I-C Wars. The Saxon Wars came later, okay? I believe the Saxon Wars were later, all right? There were Caesar versus the Belgi was the ba the battles of Axona, B -A well, battles of Axona, A-X-O-N-A, -A, and the Battle of Sabis, S-A-B-I-S. Now, that was 57. Julius Caesar was way before Tiberius. But my point is, it was many battles with the Belgi, okay? And different emperors had had the task of dealing with them and beating them back out of the Roman Empire because they wanted to invade. They didn't like living in the North. The Roman Empire was very rich. Okay. So when it comes to me as Uther, my former name was Marcus. That was my original name. We know Marcus is a Latin name. 
Okay. I just got done talking about Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Okay. Who was, of course, who? Roman. This ties... Wait, I told you it was a, I was tied into the kings of uh, Europe, but also down into the pharaohs. All of those Roman emperors tied down into the pharaohs too. All right. All of those British kings go back to the pharaohs too. All right. It's all, it's all a long line, a big ass family tree. Now, when we come to Aulus Tiberius Claudius, my father, I'm going to tell you who that is. Just one moment. I'm going to put this phone down because I need to type something. And then I'm going to tell you how I'm related to a very, 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 very popular, notorious trilogy or uh, series that the world knows. Just one moment. Other than now, everybody pretty much has heard of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and the Pendragons. All right. But I'm about to tell you where else they told my story. And it's going to make sense now as to why I used to always talk about this. Now, according to this book, the, the name of the father of Uther was Aulus Tiberius Claudius. But that may not be historically his real name. Okay? Because when I try to look in on the internet for who was Uther's father, it's hard to find. Okay? Okay? But I have not read the Historia Regium Britannae yet, History of the Kings of Britain, to find out if he's in there. So I, I still got some digging to do. But in the book, it was someone named Aulus Tiberius Claudius. Okay, now Morgana Le Fay is the sister of Uther, even though in Cursed they depicted Morgana as the sister of King Arthur. No, that would actually make her the aunt of King Arthur. If this book is true. See, a lot of shit has been mixed up. Not a fault of the author. It's just they hide different things and code things different ways. All right. For or for good reason. They say in this book that Morgana Le Fay, Morgana was the sister of Uther, which would make her the aunt of Arthur, not the sister of Arthur. I've told you that Morgana is my nemesis. Okay. Because when I was King Arthur, I thought that Morgana was my nemesis. Morgana technically is a kind of a nemesis energy to King Arthur. Even in the show Cursed, you saw that they kind of didn't get along. All right. That Arthur, King Arthur, my son, and Morgana didn't really get along. But in the show, they showed Morgana as his sister. But in this book, it says that Morgana was my sister. So I got a lot of digging to do. Because Morgana is a nemesis energy to me. Okay. Morgana is the one that Merlin who was by my side from the age of me being 15, Merlin was allegedly, according to this book, brought to the household by my father, who again I said was named Aulus Tiberius Claudius in this book. I don't know if that's his real name. Okay, I'm, I'm doing, this is like a scavenger hunt for me. He was bought by my father to be a, um, a wonderful scribe and a teacher to me, a mentor. Because Merlin, according to this book, Uther Pendragon by Rob Stewart, was only five years older than me. So that explains why in Cursed on Netflix, you saw that Merlin and Uther had like this friendly, you know, like brotherly type of relationship. But even though Merlin was his right hand man, because they were very close in age and you could even tell that in the show, they're close in age. So according to this book, Merlin was only five years old. So five years older, Merlin was 21 and he came to be with me and my household at when I was 15. All right. 15, 16. So Merlin was the one that ended up training Morgana. Who one one book says is my sister. And another book says is Arthur's sister. To be a sorceress. And cursed on Netflix. They show Morgana going off with Merlin at the end of the show. At the end of season one. I don't know what's going to happen in season two. But I'm excited to find out. So um in cursed on netflix they also showed that morgana made a pact um kind of unknowingly with a what i would call a scottish banshee and she was a goddess who helped the germanic tribes um the scots the welsh the gaelic overcome the roman empire and in the show they talk about that as 1044 144 on the dot 
by the way, today is Saturday, September 4th, 2021. All right. So Morgana ended up taking on this. Uh, she ended up making some kind of pact spiritually with the Banshee who killed 10,000 Roman soldiers in a valley uh, on Cursed. Okay. And um, because the Germanic tribes were not were overcome by them. And so they called on this Banshee, this, this, um, vindictive warrior goddess and she killed those roman soldiers for the scots okay this ties me into mary queen of scots okay the tudors yes them the rich the rich tudors yes t-u-d-o-r-s the tudors okay mary queen of scots and all of them all of those people were related okay this ties me close up in there with um, people like, um, his name is escaping me, so one moment. Okay, um, this ties me in lineage up in with people like Sir William Wallace, which the movie Braveheart was based on the life of, even though he's much later. Okay, that was medieval times, that was 1200s, 1300s. Robert the Bruce, okay, the Black Douglas. Mary, Queen of Scots, all of them, okay? All of this is a long line of knights and kings and queens, okay? Uh, one of my soul sisters, shout out to her. I haven't forgot about you, sis. I got to write a bunch of emails back, you and other people. But um, she is tied in with Mary, Queen of Scots. And I told her that in uh, her past life reading many months ago. And she's she's been doing the historical research because that's her specialty in tying everything together. This is the soul sister that I said is Archangel. Is an Archangel. Okay, I'm not going to say which one she is, but she's an Archangel. And she is the one who I said is a, a, a Roman, a Greco-Roman uh, duchess from a past life tied in there with Tsar Nicholas, the Romanovs and all of them. Okay, royalty, baby. Royalty. And I had been figured out earlier this year that me and her must be, we must be related from a past life. And we are. Because more and more pieces have been coming together, including the fact that I was revealed as Archangel Michael and she's revealed as another Archangel closely related to me. Definitely related to me because all the Archangels are like family too. Just like we have cousins and brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers in this life and in the 3D, that is a spiritual lineage as well. And I know the Christians don't like to tell you that. I know they love to tell you like that archangels and angels are like fucking sterile and they never like they're just there. Like they're just some kind of drone to just do whatever God says and like they don't have anybody else related to them. They're just a standalone lone tree or excuse me, lone branch off of God's tree. That's not how it is really. How it really is, is they all are related, their family, in different ways, okay? Now, um, I am, y'all ain't gonna believe this shit, but I asked and they told me for real, for real, and now I understand. Y'all have heard me talk a lot about Lord of the Rings and how um, I identify heavily with Aragorn. Aragorn, okay? <laughs> In this book called Uther Pendragon by Rob Stewart, it says that Uther, meaning me, formerly known as Marcus, that me, Uther, that I was arranged to marry Lady Arwen. Lady Arwen. Lady Arwen was who? In the Lord of the Rings. She was the elven queen or princess, rather, in Lord of the Rings. So you know who that makes me in Lord of the Rings? Aragorn. The one that saved Frodo and helped them win that fucking war. The king that returned. The return of the king. That was me marrying Lady Arwen. Because it's in this book, Uther Pendragon. Now let me tell you, Rob Stewart and J.R.R. Tolkien, as two different authors, I don't know if they have some kind of lineage relation because Rob Stewart is German. And he had a father, according to his short biography on the back of the book, his his father was in the German Ministry of Defense on the eastern side of Germany. Okay, in charge of, I think, East Watch or something, as they would call it. And see, I'm saying it like that for a reason. That just came out, East Watch. Go back to the Game of Thrones history. Nice Watch, Night's Watch. 
which was Northern Watch against the Germanic tribes, against the giants. Then East Watch, that's Germany. That's, that is a whole retelling. Game of Thrones is a whole retelling of all of the stuff that went on in Europe at a certain time period, including the magic. Okay, Lord of the Rings is a retelling of old earth history plus uh, European history plus elven history. Okay, Middle Earth peoples as well as the magic. You know who Merlin was. It's obvious, baby. Merlin was motherfucking Gandalf. But see, Merlin was my ace boon coon, so I have magical abilities too. Merlin was Gandalf in, in Lord of the Rings. I am Aragorn. I asked the higher powers. They said, yes, Merlin is Gandalf. And Aragorn is Uther Pendragon. The sun that Lady Arwen had a vision of having, along with Aragorn in Lord of the Rings, that she rebuked her daddy, who was played by Hugo Weaven, who played Agent Smith in The Matrix. See, this is a long battle. I've been battling Agent F Smith for a long time. Now, even though that was not a nemesis to me in the movie, he didn't want me to marry his daughter because he said, you mortal, my daughter is immortal. And Arwen was like, no, you trying to act like daddy that it's just going to be death if I go with Aragorn. It ain't death. I have seen life. I have seen my son. Who was the son? The son was King Arthur. The sword Excalibur was in Lord of the Rings. That was the sword that the elves reforged. The one that Arathorn II, who was the father of Uther, a.k.a. Aragorn, used to cut off the hand, excuse me, cut off the finger of Sauron that wore the ring, the one ring to rule them all. This is a retelling of the story again. So I am Aragorn in that. You can ask your own gods and peoples if you want, ancestors. I am Aragorn in Lord of the Rings. My son, um, I have to, I'm actually going back and rereading the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy because I first read The Hobbit in eighth grade, and it's been a couple years since I've read the, it's been more than a couple years, actually. I'm not doing myself justice. Um, it's been more than a decade since I've read The Lord of the Rings cover to cover. It's over a thousand pages. I have the single volume second edition, which came out in like, 65 so i have a reprinting of the single volume second edition where all three volumes are in one big thick ass thousand some page book J.R.R. tolkien actually include intended that to be told as one long story not a trilogy but it's broken up into a trilogy but it's supposed to be one long novel and it was actually supposed to be much longer than that but for various reasons that he later he discussed it wasn't as long as he had intended. So Lord of the Rings is actually supposed to be a lot longer than a thousand pages. Okay, that's actually a short version of what J.R.R. Tolkien, bless his soul, intended. So we have George R.R. R. Martin who came out with what? A Song of Ice and Fire, a.k.a. Game of Thrones. This is the same retelling again. So no, I don't know who I am in Game of Thrones yet. I have not asked. Because these same characters are being retold from um king arthur's round table to usa pendrag in the book to lord of the rings to game of thrones it's the same characters over and over and over again but also across other genres too because kenyatta was telling me that i'm like that i'm kind of like nebula from even though i'm thanos my i'm really thanos that there's also an archetype of me that's like nebula from guardians of the galaxy so these are the same guardians, literally, y'all, same archangels, same gods, same deities, over and over and over depicted in various forms, in various lights, telling different pieces of the story. This is the so-called game of the Matrix, okay, of Terra Nova, of the battles of Terra Nova. Terra is a goddess, just so you know, just like Gaia is a goddess, Gaia, Earth, Terra Nova. Okay, new earth or new ground. This is a retelling, also including the Star Wars, the other wars that went on with other planets. Okay, also known as other celestial beings and celestial bodies. So I'm Aragorn. Uh, Gandalf is Merlin, and Lady Arwen was the one that historically Uther was sanctioned to marry. Arwen, in this book, 
was a part of the British line. But Lady Arwen in this book, we actually married or were set to marry because it was to unite kingdoms so that we could properly defend the Bretons or Britain from the invading Germanic tribes. And of course, Britain had a close alliance with um, parts of the Roman Empire still at that time because this was in a four, this was in 405, 415. You know, this was way before the time of William Wallace, okay, which was in the, in the 1200s, okay way before the time of William Wall William Wallace, Robert the Bruce and them of the Scots, but it's still the same line is my point. Because Merlin is Welsh and Gaelic. AKA tied in with the Scots. Alright. Uther has a lineage up in there too, but Lady Arwen is Elvish. I told you that I, Utha Pendragon, I said this in that video and if you didn't listen to it, I'll put it in a box for you. I said I, Utha Pendragon recognize the pain of Adelina Bond, B-O-N-N, -N, because Adelina Bond is a fae. She's a fairy. She's of the fae lineage. And historically, the fae lineage, aka the elven lineage, was in the lands of Uther, me, and my forefathers. Okay? You will see that depicted in Curse. And I said in that video months ago, I said, I recognize the pain and know what Adelina Bond said to be true. I just read this book earlier, y'all. With the Pendragon. I'm only in the beginning of the book. At ninth, I'm on the ninth chapter. Exactly. I read this book, y'all. There was a place called Fort Bond. B-O-N-N. -N, which Adelina Bond has the last name of. Which I and my father, Aulus, named in this book Aulus Tiberius Claudius. Who may have a different real name. Defended. There's no way this is all a coincidence. Fort Bond, Adelina Bond, Faye, I'm Faye. I'm not a fairy, but I am Faye. Why am I Faye? Because obviously, for me to marry Lady Arwen, who's Elvin or Faye, our forefathers had a lineage together too. Because otherwise, if I was from some rival clan, they wouldn't have allowed me to marry her in my past life. They wouldn't have arranged a marriage as a defense to protect the people of Britain or Britain. And this was an ally with Sussex, not Sussex in Northumbria or anything, but it was Sussex because Lady Arwen's father was over Sussex at the time. And I want to say that I was a part of, I can't remember y'all. I'm going to have to go back and look. It's so much material for me to keep up with. Winchester yeah so my father my father was from it says Aulus Tiberius Claudius moves among moves among his people which was my father speaking words of encouragement making promises of booty or treasure and wealth he is a tall man wearing a coat of mail meaning chain mail over his wooden shirt at 43 years old he is in the prime of his life his short hair, worn in the Roman style, as in a Roman Caesar cut, nestles under a wooden cap over which he wears a helmet. He traces his ancestry to the old kings of the Belgi, which is what I just described. But nearly 400 years of Roman rule have discouraged the use of the title Belgi. Instead, he is known as the chief magistrate, the principal Durvir of the region but the family have not lived in winchester for almost two generations so my father was from winchester and they wanted me his son to marry lady arwen which i ended up marrying her uh because she was from sussex okay so winchester and sussex i did have it right the first time and what is a duvir a chief magistrate okay um that's one word that i need to look up that i meant to look up earlier Duvir is a member of a du Duvirit, okay, D-U-U-M-V-I-R-A-T-E, a Duvir, D-U-U-V-I-R, 
In Roman history, it was one of two officers or magistrates or judges united in the same public function. All right. So chief magistrate or duvir, also known as duumvir. So some people, will, I think that might have been a typo, duvir, D-U-U-V-I-R. But it also is spelled, officially is spelled by Merriam-Webster Dictionary as duumvir, D-U-U-M-V-I-R. Okay, so that's who my father was, who is in this book named Aulus Tiberius Claudius. Okay, it said he was dressed and wore his hair like he, he wore his hair in a Roman style, which means he was Roman. That's what gives me right. Okay, because I said that I'm tied in with the Italians and I wasn't lying. And I told you that I speak Latin and Italian. Now, I can't just speak a uh, fluent Italian to you consciously. That It comes out of my spirit. Usually, that's one of the tongues that will come out is Old Latin. Now, I know some people might say, well, demons also... Well, goddamn right demons speak Old Latin because that's how I know how to tell their ass to get the fuck on and do what they need to do when they need to fucking do it. I speak them languages too. The archangels speak all kind of languages too, not just demons. You know, the Christians love to teach y'all that the demons speak all kind of languages, but so do angels and archangels. So this is just fascinating to me, baby, for me to be up in the Lord of the Rings. Now y'all see why I, <laughs> let me tell you, don't let, let me tell you something right quick. Just to show you, I didn't make this shit up. In this book, it said that Uther's father, that my father had said, he wanted me to go visit Storm, uh, Stonehenge with Merlin. Now, they don't call it Stonehenge in the book yet. They call it um, the stone the stone monuments of the old peoples where the priests used to go and worship. And they describe it as somewhere where the priests used to go to worship uh, during the equinoxes and the solstices, which is obviously Stonehenge. And my father said, no, you need to go with Merlin and visit Stonehenge Uther, they didn't call it Stonehenge. They just said the stone monuments of the old people. You need to go there, Uther, because you're going to you're going to rule this land one day, meaning you're going to rule Britain. You need to know what's in this land. Plus, it'll be good for you to get out and about and see what's on up there. So um, I want to say that Gloucester. Yeah, uh, Merlin came from Gloucester, Gloucester, which we know Gloucester is also connected to Scotland, too. OK. So in this book, <laughs> uh, this is what my father said about me. And I'm going to tell you how you know this shit ain't made up. Call it, you can call it historical fiction all you want, Mr. Stewart and publisher. Mr. Stewart is not calling it historical fiction. That's what a publisher labeled it as. You know, for business purposes, right? You can call it fiction all you want. This is the damn truth. Because I'm going I'm to read this here to you. So it says. Early September, Merlin requests an interview with Aulus, which is my father. He is received in Aulus's study, which is a warm room with a glazed, clear story window that lets sun, sunlight fall on the faded frescoes of scenes. From the story of the labors or the workings of Heracles, also known as Hercules. I'm adding that in here, but he's called Heracles on the wall. A group of wax death masks on the wooden, on the wood adorn a table against one wall. In a niche, in another wall, a crucifix vies for space with the household wares. Although nominally Christian, Aulus is hedging his bets. He sits on a chair behind his desk his legs stretched out and his arms folded. What can I do for you? Meaning, what can I do for you, Merlin? Merlin stands straight, almost at attention. I would like your permission to travel, Lord. You want to leave us? Aulus is surprised because Merlin seemed content with his duties, which have expanded to take on the role of secretary to Aulus. No, Lord, I'm very happy here, Merlin assures him. I do not wish to leave, only to take a few days to vis visit the stone temple of the old people, which I'm going to add in here is Stonehenge. Ah, says Aulus, greatly relieved that Merlin did not want to leave to seek his fortune elsewhere. It lies in your land, I believe, Merlin said. Aulus says, yes, on the boundaries. No one goes there much. It was not built by our people, 
the Britons, although there are stories that the old priests used to worship there at the equinoxes and the solstices. The sun rises between the stones, I am told. But the Romans destroyed the old priesthood, meaning the Druids, when they first came to Britain. The shepherds graze their flocks there now. Nevertheless, Merlin said, I would dearly like to see it. Then you shall, Aula said, with my blessing. It is about two days north of here. Take a horse from the stables and tell the kitchen to pack you up some supplies. Aulis pauses for a moment and then says, Why don't you take Uther, meaning me, with you? It will do him good to see a bit more of the country he might end up ruling. Merlin says, I will be glad to, Lord, if he wants to come. He too pauses. Um... Merlin says, uh, I, I think he's preoccupied at the present. He coughs. <clears throat> yes, the, my father says, yes, I, I've heard he's busy screwing every woman with a pulse in the vicinity, getting it out of his system before the Lady Arwen arrives. And by the way, Arwen, A-R-W-E-N, is spelled exactly how it was in Lord of the Rings. All this laughs. Uther's philandering or fucking around is no secret. Besides, he continues, he's a good man to have by your side in case of any trouble. He seems to be ruled by two passions. Fighting and fucking. <laughs> there is a distinct note of pride in Aulis's voice. Ah, oh, if he will agree to accompany me, Lord Merlin says, he would be most welcome. Oh, he will. He thinks very highly of you. Is what Aulis says. He would be most upset if you got yourself killed, Merlin. Merlin cannot tell if Aulis is serious or is having a laugh at his experience, so he decides not to pursue this. Off you go then, find Uther and put the idea to him. You could try checking the hayloft in the stables. So let me tell you something. Now y'all understand why I'm ruled by Scorpio. Fighting that Aries and fucking because Scorpio rules the house of sex, okay? So they say. Scorpio rules the root chakra. So that's how you know they didn't make this shit up and I'm not making it up. Okay? Alrighty. Now that I've said that, y'all can check me out through any of these entertaining shows. Now, again, I haven't checked out to find out who I am in Game of Thrones. But I'm for sure Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. One of the main characters. All right? And so, um, those who know Lord of the Rings history know that that's a retelling, all right, of the uh, kings of Britain, Germanic tribes, and, the, and a lot of spiritual component in there. So, when I was sharing with you all in videos that I made, like, yes, you can get the dark side to fight for you, and I was using the Aragorn thumbnails with the sword, okay, that sword is Excalibur from Arthurian legend. It's the same sword, okay. And I talked to you about how Aragorn went into the mountain. And the dead said, who go there? And Aragorn said, uh, I, I am a descendant. Uh, I am the heir to the throne. Okay, I'm the heir to Isildur. I think I have that correct. And um, if you fight for me, I will hold your oaths fulfilled. Only a necromancer can talk to the dead like that, right? So there's your proof that I'm a real necromancer, also a druid. Because you saw that hood. That was not just a um, ranger hood that Aragorn had on in the Lord of the Rings. If you go back and watch it, that was a fucking druid hood. They put codes and clues to you everywhere. Gandalf, yes, is Merlin. But Aragorn also has that druidic lineage. All right. That is why Aragorn was the one who addressed the dead. The dead said, who goes there? And he tried to hurt Aragorn, the leader of the dead army, tried to hurt Aragorn with a spiritual sword. And Aragorn held back his spiritual sword with a 3D sword and said, no, you're not going to hit me. That's what a necromancer has power to do. All right. But. This was just meant to be a small bit of information, all right, with some little codes and keys that I've discovered in my ongoing <laughs> um, spiritual investigation of my past lives tied into my current lives, tied in with my spiritual archetype, etc. 
there will be more information coming as I churn through these books. I have a couple more books. Um, like I said, uh, so I have an old book on King Arthur. I have a couple books on, I have collectively several books on me, King Arthur, which is Kenyatta, and Merlin. But of course, those three being the so-called famous characters, the prominent ones, there are the, the other characters are in those books too. So as I am reading through and tying in, correlating everything together, then of course I will bring you the information as I decode it because there are other people out here who are these reincarnated characters. As I told you before, Merlin is also reincarnated. I don't know him in real life though. All right. Um, him, her. I don't know if Merlin is reincarnated as a man or as a woman in this life. I have not asked. It is exactly 11, 11 p.m. when I said that. Okay. And in the, in the timer hit 45 minutes and 54 seconds, which is 99. And I'm on chapter nine of this book called Uther Pendragon. Okay. So I will bring more information as I discover it. I'm going all the way back through the thousand pages of Lord of the Rings. Plus I'm reading other books at the same time. So, thank you so much for listening. I will talk with you all soon. Namaste.